Hello, everybody. This is the Movie Guru, and today I want to dive, I want to take a deep dive into one of my favorite shows from that everybody has been subscribing to and liking my theories videos. But this week I came across another theorist who I think we all need to hear what he has to say. So uh, I want to tell a little bit about my story on From. Uh, I started my journey on From for about uh, about a year ago. And from the first trailer, uh, I knew immediately that this was going to be my type of show, uh, especially how much I like Lost. And actually, after I saw some of the same producers were even attached to the show. So I watched the episode and I went to Reddit. If you guys are familiar with Reddit, you understand how it works. There's there's for forums and people post theories. Uh, and I found three dedicated forums to the show. And I started posting, you know, just random thoughts to see, you know, how people were reacting to it. And it just kind of snowballed. It went from uh, a couple of thoughts to me asking some bigger questions. Then it pretty much turned into full blown theories. Uh, and from there, one theory caught my attention. And what it was, was the detail that was put into the theory. Uh, and as I, as the season unfolded, it started making sense. So I reached out to the author, and he's here today. And so I want to bring him into the chat. And he's, he's going to talk about his theory and give us a breakdown of how he came up with it, his background. So, Taran, am I saying that right? How are you doing today, sir? It's, it's Taran, like Darren or Karen. Um, Taryn, got it. Yeah, uh, and yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, this is my favorite show by far. I have never ever liked a show this much. Uh, I've never joined a forum about a show before. I've never been on Reddit before, like discussing shows. I've never like dedicated time to like watching it and writing theories down or anything like that. So mm. it's grabbed me like no other show has. Mm. And I know that a lot of people probably watching this feel the same way. Uh, there's something really special about this show. Uh, but for me, what I like about it is that I, I almost see it as not just a piece of entertainment, but a puzzle and a mystery to be solved. And the creators are asking the audience to try and solve it. Uh, they're not asking everyone to solve it. I don't think they expect people to. Um, but I think that it's part of the charm of the show. And I've sort of gone pretty deep in, into my research and trying to figure out what's going on in this show. And I feel like I have not the solution but a solution to the show where it answers mm -hmm. all the questions more or less uh, and it ties it all together. But there are many ways that they could approach it, but this is just one way. And I thought it was kind of cool to write it all out and see what people thought. And I think now it's the third most liked theory on Reddit and the, uh, or the second most, but the first most is uh, Elgin is Fatima's time travel baby. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, okay. that, take that with a pinch of salt. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, it's been quite fun getting people's reactions and seeing people who liked it. Yeah. And so, yeah, you know, I had my own theories and that's sort of where we came into connection with because from the runes and some of the writing. So my my methodology was follow the writing. Right. It, what they first showed us and not mm -hmm. sort of just uh, sort of, you know, go by where I thought the show was going. But the clues, the breadcrumbs that they were giving us. And trying to decipher that, because just like you said, I, I got that message too. that. Wow. They're putting these clues out there for us to put together from, you know, the poems in the backgrounds. Right. From some of the, the outfits and clothes that the characters are wearing from, you know, just little wor words that they see or emotions that they do. And I'm like, wow, it's something else here. Uh, and you're right. That was really my early days on Reddit and really enjoyed connecting and reading theories. And so let's let's get into some of your your theories uh, here. But before we start, I do want to put a big, big spoiler warning uh, for anyone who wants to figure it out on themselves or doesn't want to find out this much detail of the show or what it possibly could be. Uh, so spoiler warning here. So I'm going to actually bring up uh, the your page in uh, in Reddit. Uh, and so here we go. Here it is. And so this is the from TV epics. 
Uh, and as you guys know, when From First was released, it was released on Epics. Uh, and then it uh, further went, they changed that platform and it went to MGM Plus. Uh, and the little fact there too, um, From was supposed to be a YouTube series. I don't know if you guys remember like YouTube Red. Yeah. So, really? I mean, I'm guessing, I mean, when you, if you see this on paper, you're like, where well, this is way out there. Right. And so the production expense must be huge like youtube must have had a crazy budget if they were going to make this because i mean if you go on imdb which i do because i like to look at some of the extras and they will actually come from one canadian agency um but they don't list all their names so i kind of like doing that deep dive to see you know what they look like as actors and things like that um but yeah what what interested me is that they have when you see the number of people working on this show once you get past the cast and you just go on like the script supervisor the script checker the script mm -hmm. this they've got They've got so many people working on this show. This must be MGM's flagship show. This must be their big punt. And I got to say, I'm supporting this as much as I can. I'm telling every single person I know. I tweeted about it on my platform. Actually, Harold Perrineau retweeted me, which was super cool of him. Um, you know, so it's it's such an amazing show. It's trying something different. It's trying something new. And, you know, there's been so many, like, Lost spinoffs, you know, people trying to recreate the magic of Lost. And mm -hmm. I think if there was ever a show that's managing to do Lost but the right way, it's this one. I agree. I agree. And so uh, this is the Reddit page uh, from TV Epics. And this is your, your theory. Uh, and so you posted this. Uh, and the way Reddit works, it can be upvoted. It can be downvoted. So right now, off the bat, you've got 227 upvotes. Yeah, the people who actually read it all the way through, they tend to like it. Now, my, my theory has a, an aspect of tarot, which is mm. like the, those like cards that people use for like fortune telling, but it also has a, like a, a history as the origin of the playing card. And people hate that. Uh, they really don't like tarot. They don't know anything about it. They don't want the answer to the show to be about tarot. So quite often when I post, sometimes it just gets downvoted automatically by like 10 people because they really don't like anything to do with it. But that will come up as well. Um, but okay. yeah, I've, I, the response has been pretty positive. When people read it all the way through, it sort of starts to make a little bit of sense. And uh, yeah, I'm, I feel I feel really nice that people have left me some comments saying like, this has really helped me understand the show or formulate my own theories. Uh, but yeah, so let me run you through it. So basically, the first thing I did was I looked at the dates because that's the biggest clue in the whole mm -hmm. show, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and you, the earliest date is the most important one because it kind of tells you what set this... Uh, spell or curse or simulation, whatever you want to call it, what was the origin point of this story? Because that really tells you what's going on. And when you look at uh, North America, and this is very clearly a North American focused show. I mean, they've got 1950s uh, America there. They've got 1860s America there. Like some of the most pivotal moments in American history are, are very clearly telegraphed. And if it wasn't obvious enough, the show is called From and everything in it is American so far. And uh, you've also got the American map with pins on America only. So mm -hmm. it's very America focused. Um, so I looked at this and I said, what people who aren't Native American have visited North America before 1506? And there are three people other than the Vikings, like three explorers. And every single one of them factors into my theory. But that's really what got me started. Mm, so, the dates, yep. Follow the dates, yep. So let's say you look at the first ever man to reach North America who wasn't a Viking or a Native American person. Um, it was a man called John Cabot. He's an Italian explorer, kind of similar to Columbus, but uh, something that many people don't know, uh, and it's still so, it kind of surprised me when I, when I discovered this, is that Columbus never set foot in North America. Mm. In fact, he didn't even sail along the shore of North America. The closest he got was the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. So John Cabot is the real true discoverer of North America, and I actually think that's something the show wants people to learn. Yeah. So anyway, John Cabot, he's famous for disappearing on his way to Newfoundland. So he went there once, came back, and then on his way back there, he disappeared completely. So I was like, okay, that's got to wow. be it, right? So, and, and yeah. then the, the next two people who were also headed to Newfoundland, they also went missing. And they were the Corte Real brothers, and they actually enslaved Native Americans. So I can tell that they're going to be the villains of this story. So anyway, yeah. let's keep going down. So, so you scroll down, there's three people. Who have come um who have reached uh, mainland north america and you see these boats now they're on a river but there's there's several pictures in victor's room um of coastlines 
Um, and it seems pretty clear to me that it's these are three different boats arriving, which signifies three different groups of people arriving. Oh, okay. These are the three explorers who went missing on their way to Newfoundland. So not not one group, but three boats at different times, kind of. Yeah, actually, sort of one boat once, and then oh. two boats at the same time, just like the two cars mm. that keeps coming up. So you've got Sarah oh. saying it was the two cars that killed everyone, right? Who mm. came last time? That's what her voice says. Right. And then Victor's also like two cars came and then everyone died. Right. So this I is the same connection. Thing. These two brothers, one went missing. And then a year later, his own brother went to search for him again in Newfoundland. And I think that they both arrived at the same time um, at this cove, uh, Boyd's Cove uh, in, in Newfoundland. And what's also is that really actually the name of it? It's called right. Boyd's Cove. So let me tell you, this is what's really cool about this. This theory is that Cabot's ship was called the Matthew. Just like the Matthews family, right? That's pretty wow. cool. And that is cool. The, the Native Americans who lived in Newfoundland, and they, actually they only migrated there pretty pretty soon before Cabot um, reached there. So they were actually relatively late arrivals. And the Inuit, and I haven't mentioned them in my theory because I wanted to keep it simple, but the Inuit who create those, um, those stone things, I've mm -hmm. forgotten what they're called now, that the kids knock over in season two, Oh Those yeah, it's it's called like a in, in what or something. It's like an I N G U, yeah. Something like that, right? So th there's something that they build, and the, the Inuit were actually there before the Beothuk. But the main the main mythology of this show, in my opinion, and I think it's pretty it's pretty obvious when you look at it, is the Beothuk. They are a, so. Let's scroll down, and I'll, I'll I'll run you through that. So, so first of all, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll stay in order, right? So uh, you can stay there. That's perfect. So. The other thing is we've got this stone circle, right? And we've also got this stone lodge. And those predate 1506. That's what confuses the timeline. Why would there be stone circles in North America? Mm. There are almost, the Native Americans never made stone circles. The closest they made were like these 10 things that they really don't look like the stone circle we're seeing. But do you know mm. who did make stone circles? The Vikings. Mm -hmm. The Vikings made stone, made stone circles. And do you know... Uh, who also came to America before 1506, the Vikings 500 years before reached mm -hmm. Newfoundland and they created a civilization called Vinland. Mm -hmm. And then they all died out. Nobody really knows what happened to them. But I believe that that stone circle comes from the piece of land that was teleported to create Fromland. And that is mm -hmm. why there is a stone circle, even though it's North America. Uh, so that answers the, um, the stone circle question. Um, and then you look at the native people. So the native people of Newfoundland they, they um, covered themselves in what are called red ochres. So it's basically a type of clay dust. Oh, okay. They would cover themselves in it as part of their religion. And some people believe that um, the racist Native American term red Indian comes from the fact that the first Native Americans that explorers encountered in Newfoundland were the Beothuk who covered themselves in red in dust. Red, yeah. Whenever they saw them, they were completely red. And if you look at the cave paintings, you can see mm -hmm. that there are red stick figures there dancing around what looks like a, a cornfield or a wheat field of some kind yeah. so i imagine when cabot was marooned on in newfoundland he had to plant crops he probably had some some uh, sheep and some goats with him which is probably where those come from yeah. again it's that he he would have brought some with him ships would often take like some animals that would live in the hold they would feed them on grain they would get milk from the sheep they get milk from the goats maybe they slaughter the sheep as they were traveling so that's where the chickens and the goats and all these livestock came from because they came with Cabot. Mm -hmm. And then Ellis, for no reason, for no reason at all, he has a painting of Tudor people in his room. So you can see it there. That, yeah. that is, that is the, the dress of the people of this story, the Beothuk in their red ochres. And in Ellis's room, you've got the painting of the Tudors. Now they're holding blankets and there is um, history associated with blankets um, infected with disease given to Native Americans to wipe them out. And in fact, the Beothuk people were eventually wiped out, partly due to atrocities, partly due to being pushed out of their traditional hunting uh, grounds by settlers, uh, and partly um, to do with smallpox, unfortunately. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I wonder if that's the fact that they're holding blankets is related to that. But I would hesitate to think that the writers would include that as mm -hmm. a part of the plot, because it is a pretty... I, I, it's a pretty tragic thing to recreate. Yeah. And, and on that part, you know, I did most recently uh, for anyone listening that's up to date um, when Ellis was in his room. You're right. He was in the bed and you could see some pictures. 
And so I've been trying to do, I call it wall crawling. Like I've just been trying to like look at the pictures and what people are drawing, especially since, you know, Victor's room is heavily covered with drawings and Ella is kind of doing the same thing. And I thought at first that the pictures were just of um, Fatima. Uh, but then I'm like, there's one that looks like her, but I'm like, those two over there, you're right. Don't look like that, that they were her. Uh, and yeah. then going to Victor's room, there's a small silver statue and oh, yeah. I was I was able to see it more clearly in season one. But in season two, I wasn't able to see it as clearly. But it stands out. It's silver. Um, and it's on his desk, not desk, um, the nightstand by the door. Sure. And so when Julie came in the room, you see it there, but it's not a close up shot. But in season one, it looks like soldiers. Right. And and I was trying to put that piece together. And now that you're saying that this, you know, the uh, these guys went there and they might have been, you know, sort of looking like soldiers. It could have been them. Yeah. So, so the Tudors were the people who lived um, in England in the four, uh, sort of late 1400s to like the 1600s, I think. And they were the, so if you've ever seen those pictures of those people with those like white ruffles around their neck, that's who the Tudors yeah. were. And yeah, some there's of a them series called the Tudors. Exactly. It's, it's mm. those people, right? So they're dressed like them. And some of them may well have been soldiers, by the way. And, and I think that what you've spotted with that silver figurine is really cool because I think that the 1860s come into this, but I'll, I'll talk about that a little later. But what's super interesting is that if you look at the, um, the, um, the archaeology that they've done in Newfoundland, there is one site where most of the Beathurk, um archaeology has been done because they found the remains of a Beathurk village. And where do you think that Beathurk village was located? in modern day Newfoundland, what the place is called that they landed. You said uh, Boyd's, Boyd's Cove. Boyd's Cove. So you've got the Matthew ship landing in Boyd's Cove where all the beer thick people were. You've got them in red red um, dust and stuff. I And you got Tudor clothing in Alice's room. So this is how I put that together. But anyway, let's continue. So now you're going to have to bear with me here because a lot of where this comes from, people are going to say, I've got what's called pareidolia, which is when you're looking at stuff and you're reading into it when it doesn't actually mean anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I've seen a lot of um, imagery with like two small identical things and then like a third bigger sort of vessel next to it throughout mm. the series when you're looking around. And I believe this, this represents twins and a mother, Okay, and I see this everywhere. And I, you know, my some of the people I speak to, they're like, "You're crazy, man! This is just like two cups and a and a jug <laughs> next to each other. Like, what what does that mean?" But trust me, if you rewatch the whole series and you keep an eye out for symbology representing yeah. two two people, uh, two kids and a mother, you'll see. And sometimes you'll see like uh, sort of something trailing over it, like cables or like threads of ribbon, and that's to represent the sea monster that we'll talk about in a bit. Okay. Um, but you also see witch mythology. So I combine this idea of a mother with the witch. Okay. So I believe that there is a witch mother and you actually see this, this woman in Victor's drawings in, in several locations. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can he see here Victor's depiction of the witch. Mm -hmm. It's an older woman you can see from the wrinkles on her face and the wrinkles under her eyes. Um, and I believe that there is a wit there is a woman who while Cabo is marooned on this island, she is accused of being a witch because this was during the time of the Inquisition. Mm -hmm. And guys who are, they were, they're called friars. They would go around and they would say, you're a witch. And they would interrogate you. They would drown you and prick you and, and set you on fire to see if you were a witch. And uh, guess what? Guess who accompanied John Cabot on his trip to Newfoundland? A friar from Italy mm -hmm. um, where the Inquisition had just begun. Uh, so it's quite likely that they picked this woman and they were like, hey, you're a witch. And they started torturing her. And that is why she's represented as a witch in the show. Mm. So anyway, wow. we can keep it, scrolling. That's, that's actually really, really good. Uh, for, like I said, also for those up to date, because um, and are you up to date on the show? I'm, I'm assuming you're up to date. I've only seen up to, to uh, I think it is. OK. And yeah. uh, I, I try not to. I want to guess things the moment it comes out on the mm -hmm. show. I don't want to like get any spoilers at all. So I know that you've seen up to, to, to episode nine. So I, mm -hmm. I really don't, please don't yeah. tell me anything. Cause I want to be the one who get, I want to know what episode I guess what, if yeah. that makes sense. So I try to avoid spoilers. There's a spoiler channel in discord. I keep getting tagged in it. I'm like, no, I'm not looking no. in there. 
so no episode seven uh you know we see elgin in the bathtub right yes yeah and um that was a big scene because now looking at the pictures and looking at you know what we saw from elgin's point of view matches right yeah it yeah, although I will tell you, I have a different theory for that, which I will get onto, but okay. uh, it, could, it could be the witch. We don't know. So look, then I'm just interpreting what's on the cave painting. So that looks like it might be a bit of a prison that she's kept in, the bird circling, you know, it's kind of mm -hmm. prison-like. So maybe she's kept in a prison. That was typical uh, when a witch was accused, they'd keep her trapped somewhere. And that's a woman and a child from, from a difference in size. So I believe that she had a son while she was out there. Wow. Right? And 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 uh, and she was kept apart from her son, mm -hmm. and I believe that Cabot and actually the Corte Real brothers who arrived, the two ships I'm talking about, they came back to Newfoundland. They got marooned there too. They arrived at the same time. I believe that they were the ones who precipitated the atrocities against the Beerthuk, mm -hmm. and that is uh, along with this this friar who probably wanted to convert them, and that's why there's no Bibles in Fromland, and mm -hmm. that's why people yeah. are getting punished. And and I did pick up on that from season one. Uh, just in the Reddit talking about Father Kotri, because I I, I kind of was talking about him a lot, um, just about how I felt he was perceived by the people, um, mm. you know, how when he passed, he didn't have a funeral. You know, I, I, I thought that was just weird on his own. Um, yeah. And then yeah. someone did mention that there is no Bibles anywhere, uh, yeah. even though there's so much Bible talk. Absolutely. And actually, I saw a book called Bible Stories. I don't know if they accidentally left it on a shelf or not. But uh, there is a book called Bible Stories. I think they left that there to make the people who think this is some sort of Christian mm -hmm. uh, mythology thing going on to sort of confuse them, maybe. Um, but anyway, so now in season two, we have we have food starting to run out. We have winter coming. And I believe this is replicating what happened to the, the explorers on the island. They started to starve. Two ships arrived. Too many people. Winter comes. No food. Um, and then, uh, believe it or not, in the 1500s, they would also cut people's tongues out if they spoke of mutiny or if they spoke of blasphemy. So they were, you know, said God doesn't exist or whatever. And I believe that they cooked people's tongues. You've got a cauldron full of tongues there. And I imagine that they cut people's tongues who are threatening to mutiny. And then they cooked them because they didn't want to waste it as food. Yeah. And I think all the mythology were related to drowning and the floods and the fire, the, the skeleton on fire. I believe that's related to the witch's trial where she had to go through a trial. They threw her in a lake and she was to test if she would drown. And then they set her on fire to kill her. Um, so I believe towards the end of this story, um, they leave the witch to burn and they start sailing away with her son. And I believe she calls on the Beathuk gods to help her. She says, any God who will listen. Oh, okay. So that's where, listen, okay. Help me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and this is where we're going to talk about the Beathuk religion, because this for me is what seals it. This is this is what happens. So they suck the Beathic gods. They suck a piece of Fromland out of, away from the coast, and they create. Uh, they suck this piece of Newfoundland away, and that is why they film in Nova Scotia, which is right around the corner from Newfoundland, mm -hmm. because all the weather's the same, the geography is the same. It is authentic to yeah. the location that they teleported. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so let me tell you about the Beathic religion because it aligns so much with the symbology of the show that I think it's almost undeniable, but this is, you know, obviously it's, it's just my opinion. So you've got a religion that's reliant on like three paragraphs that a Beathuk woman wrote about 200 years ago. She was probably the last of her kind and she learned English and she wrote about her, her people's religion. And then she died from tuberculosis mm -hmm. and she was the last Beathuk. Um, and they actually named the museum in Newfoundland after her. Um, and I believe actually the museum is in Boyd's Cove, Cove as well or near Boyd's Cove. But anyway, so this is what she said. She said, first of all, they worship the moon and the sun. Well, we've seen moon and sun symbology on the talisman. If you look mm -hmm. in the background, there's a lot of like blues versus yellows, a lot of whites versus blacks. Mm -hmm. uh, the color scheme in, uh, in From, I believe, is extremely intentional and purposeful. And I have so many screenshots just demonstrating this symbology of the moon versus the sun. But anyway, I think that's well established now. There's also the fear of a devilish man in black. So they had a devil and he was the man in black. And uh, I believe that that's Father Catri, that he has been possessed mm. by the man in black. And he is the one that is speaking to Boyd. He's like mm. the bad guy of the whole show. And it kind of aligns with Lost a little bit as well, which I thought they thought was kind of fun. 
Uh, you know, to get people to think they're copying mm. it and then saying, actually, this is from a real religion. It's an extinct mm. religion, but it's real. And then there's a sea monster. Now, listen to this, because this is what's interesting, okay? The sea monster of the Beatic religion is never described. But if you look at the sea next to Newfoundland, there is only a few dangerous creatures that could count as a sea monster. And one of them is the Newfoundland lion's mane red jellyfish. And I believe that the showrunners picked this jellyfish to represent the sea monster of the Beathook. And that is what you see on the wall. And that is what you see on the wall of the church as well. Mm. Now, I might, I might have missed that on the wall of the church. I did yeah, see it's just a stain. What'd you say? It's just a stain. You can see it there between the two, uh, the jellyfish. Oh, okay. The okay. Uh, like over here, right here. No, no. In, in, uh, to the left, in between the red cave painting. Oh. And the and the jellyfish you see down down in between them, there's like a white ball. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right so that looks to me like a jellyfish, and it was mm. next to what I thought was an anchor. Mm. So I thought uh, that had also been scratched into the wall. Okay. Um, but do you want me to tell you what ankui means? Yes, please. In my opinion, this is just my opinion. But believe it or not, we have about 300 words of the Beathook religion that were written down, and I scroll up. I came up. With, I, I um. I had this theory already, and I was like, surely there's a word that sounds like ankui in the Beothuk language, and it means something that isn't just ridiculous, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, starfish or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and if you scroll up, I'll show you it, if you scroll up just a little. So the Beothuk word, for that, it's just there, yeah, you got it. The word for tree in Beothuk is anui. Ooh. And in some Native American languages, to make a word plural, they add a K. Mm. So I believe that what they're saying to Tabitha is the trees, the trees over and over again. That's what I think she's, and it sort of works for the show, right? Like it's, there's a lot of tree stuff going on. The trees yeah. are moving, the trees are changing. There's teleportation trees. I think they're telling her the trees. And I just think that's a pretty big coincidence. And I don't mm -hmm. think many people have come as close to matching the word. And no. this is just coincidence. If, if I'm wrong about the beer theory. So that's interesting. And you know what's also interesting is that this, this jellyfish theory that I have, that the sea monster is related to the jellyfish, um, is that uh, the, the, the area where they found the Viking ruins mm -hmm. was called Jellyfish Cove. Whoa. Lance au Meduse. Now, if you look in the top right-hand corner of that page, you will see three um, weird sort of uh, crow foot looking talismans those are beer oh. artifacts that have been found in newfoundland and if you look at the third one along that mm. is the from talisman symbol in the middle and okay. does it not look like yeah. the carvings on these talismans mm -hmm. and it then you does. look below at that yellow thing that is the that is a symbol that is carved into the um into the wall beside the door of the church mm. and if you compare that to the talismans above that's a similar shape as well. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's what they're referencing. Yeah. And here's what's also interesting is that, you know, that weird symbol in the corner of the cave, it's there on the right. I think that looks a little bit like what the carvings on the Beathook game pieces. So they used to play a dice game in a bowl and they would throw these as their dice in there. And I think that sort of spiraling triangular pattern is quite similar to the drawing on the cave wall. Now I know mm -hmm. in Lost, People found all sorts of connections to the weird carvings behind, and they ended up not meaning anything. But I think that these are all the connections that I could find between the Beothuk religion and uh, what's happening in front. Well, I think you've done a, a good job uh, putting it all together uh, and giving uh, you know the fans something to go on because. You know, pro probably after you know they they throw you curveballs on the show and and. Yeah. They took us in a total another direction, and it just seemed like anything that anyone could be thinking was was totally off. And uh, this really brings it back together w with the connection of the 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 cave drawings. I mean, that's where it got the trail got cold at, right? No one could accurately describe what this was. I mean, like I said, I was going more so for the Viking, and I just kind of stayed in that Viking realm. And the only thing I could can't come up with was. Odin's, you know, horse, right, which was an eight-legged 
uh, I believe it's like self near or however well, you pronounce it. Near. Yeah. So, yep. And so I thought because counting, it does have eight. But, you know, this is one for one when you look at it to be a jellyfish. I mean, I, can I mean, really and the jellyfish the happens to be red. It happens to be right? red as well. Like the, the actual mm -hmm. animal is a red animal. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got to say, I had to make this connection. The beer thug did not specifically say that their sea monster is a red jellyfish. Mm -hmm. But the cove where the Viking ruins was called Jellyfish Cove is a famous sea animal that you can see in Newfoundland. Um, in the coves there, they'll see these like red jellyfish like all over the place. It's famous for having jellyfish. So in my opinion, they chose the animal. And, that's, mm -hmm. and they were like, Hey, we put this weird tentacle thing on the wall. People are going <laughs> to think it's aliens. People are going to yeah. think it's Cthulhu. People are going to yeah. think it's the hand of Fatima. You know, yes. they're, they're messing with us. They're like, this is no one's going to guess it's a jellyfish, right? It's a jellyfish, yeah. <laughs> Technically, the Beothuk religion never said that a jellyfish was their sea monster. So even if you type in jellyfish religion, it, it will it. never come up because yeah. they just picked what their sea monster would be. And that's why I think at the end of the season, we may see if there is a flood, if there is a flood at the end of the season, I guarantee you, well, in my opinion, we'll see underwater like a red shape, maybe a tentacle shoot out and grab someone, burn them, something like Man. that. That maybe maybe season two, I mean, it's season three. But that's my opinion. If we see a red jellyfish, I'm going to say Bertha confirmed. No, yeah, confirmed. confirmed. That would be a conf confirmation. But I, I can tell you about the game that they're playing as well, because this is not the end of the theory. They yeah. are playing a game of cards. And that is because they are playing the game of Tarochi. Mm -hmm. Now, tarot Tarochi. cards, you know them as the things that people use to predict the future. You know, you shuffle them, you put them down, and then they mean certain things. Mm -hmm. Well, they originated as the first card game invented in history. Wow. Okay, so people used to play tarot as a card game. So the king, the queen, whatever, they had instead the wizard and the, the empress and the emperor and the fool. You know, the fool is kind of like the joker in our modern day card sets. And throughout the series, mm -hmm. they hide cards everywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to mm -hmm. show you a few. And there is even more in episode seven that I haven't included because this is only up to episode six. But look, okay, so here are the cards beside Megan when she's yeah. killed. Then Jade, when he's talking to Kenny on the right, and he's like, what the hell is going on? He's holding a pack of cards for no reason. Mm, and he no flashes reason. it very quickly. And you just see that he's holding a pack of cards and then it goes away. Now, if you scroll down further, you'll see further evidence of what the cards are. That kid, yeah. he's not trapped underground in a box. And that's why they put, they, they put Boyd down a well so people would think that's what this represents. Mm -hmm. But it's not, in my opinion. Uh, they even had Victor say, oh, sometimes people will just show up in a mountain somewhere. Again, for people to think, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's someone who's just been teleported into a mountain. That is someone trapped in a card. And when you look on the right-hand mm -hmm. side, those things next to the people are the tarot cards that they represent, in my opinion. Um, those are squ those are squares. Mm -hmm. uh, they represent the cards on the table in the game between the witch and the man in black. Wow. In my opinion. And if and, you scroll down, you will see more card references. So that yep. when she goes in the tower, there's a card. Tilly's playing uh, oh, Solitaire. Yeah. Um, in episode seven, when Elgin and um, Julie are talking on the porch of Colony House, there's people playing Snap. Yeah, I saw um, that in the background. I didn't know what they was playing, but I saw them doing something. Yeah, it looked like, it looked like Snap to me. I mean, it's some sort of card game. Um, these card references are going to continue until people believe it, I think. Um, but for now, it's people don't know much about tarot, right? So they don't want to they don't want to know about it because it's not interesting to them. But it is what they're going for. Now, so why do we have this this uh, this boy in black, uh, boy in white? Why do we why do we have this twin mythology? Why do we have this sun and the moon? Well, I believe that um, in order to uh, play the game, they needed four players. But all they had was the witch, her son, and the man in black. So he said, "I'm going to split your son in two. There's going to be like the evil side of him. He's going to be the boy in white. And we're going to have your, your real son. And he's going to be uh, the, the son representation. And if you, if you look throughout the series, we see four animals that mm -hmm. aren't livestock, right? You got the crows. Mm -hmm. You got the rats who are eating the crows in the cave, which suggests that the crows and the rats uh, do not get on. You mm -hmm. got the worm that uh, Sarah picks up and she's like looking at this worm and she's like, oh, is, you know, do you think the worms know? And you got the spiders. So I'm going to say, this is just a wild prediction, but I believe that the, the moon guy is aligned with the crows. The, the sun is aligned with the rats. Wow. The witch is aligned with the spiders. And the devil, the man in black, he's aligned with the worms. So the, the monsters that we see all the time, those are crow 
those are on the Crow team. Um, they're technically on the Man in Black team as well because they're a team together. There's four players, two teams. And I believe that the Man in Black, he's been trapped by the witch. So the, the Martin has been trapped all these years because he's been possessed by, well, I'll tell you more about it later, but he's been possessed effectively by the Man in Black with the worms. And he's been kept there all these years so that he can't go and say, hey, mm. I'm a human interact with everyone, then get possessed and open all the doors and all the crows come and eat everyone. So he's been trapped by the witch there for mm. many years. And Boyd was sent there, in my opinion, by the boy in white to uh, to let Martin go. That's why he was sent there. That's the why boy the boy white was bad. like, you know, this way. Or, you know, when yes. he's talking to Sarah and she pushed him in there. And now, the boy in white threw the rope. As soon yeah. as Boyd said, I will oh, help you. He's like, OK, he's going to he's going to free him, man. And he throws down that rope. So that Boyd can climb out. That is a trap set by the witch. I believe the witch controls the trees and mm. that she's got some allies going on as well. But I think the boy in white is also able to manipulate the trees and send them where he wants as well. Um, now, but anyway, so if you real see quick about about the, that scene with Martin, before you get too deep into it, there was actually, you know, there was another body next to Martin. What do you think that yeah. was? Well, I think that that was more worm, uh, worm possessed people that the people, witch had okay. trapped. She doesn't have the heart to kill them, uh, so she leaves them trapped there, hoping that she can win the game and those people mm. will, will live when she wins the game. Okay. So that's, and I believe that that prison sits in between the two game zones. Okay. But anyway, so you can see um, the players now. Uh, you can, can you see the split where the guy's holding the rope and pressing it up against his mm -hmm. face? That is to represent the two sides of the moon and the sun. And you can see in the middle there, that is the sun, the, the wheel that is sort of half uh, half broken. You can see the rim. One mm -hmm. side is the moon. The other side is the sun. Oh, and that okay. rake going down the middle, that splits it down the middle. That is to represent the boy divided in two. And if it wasn't any more obvious, you've got these creepy twins in the opening sequence on the right. And that is to represent that. So now I have to get into tarot. Which, which is everyone's least favorite part. Uh, and to be honest, I, don't, I, I didn't even know really much about tarot and started, until I started studying this. But look at the moon card right there. You got two dogs on the moon card. Yeah. What is that? That is the boy in white and his two dogs right okay. there. Okay, you got the sun. We haven't met him yet. I believe he's trapped at the moment. And, that's, and the witch is being kept away from her son. So we'll ignore her. Uh, we got the star. Now, we haven't met the witch yet or the witch is Donna. So, but we'll leave that aside for now. And then we got the devil. So this is the bit that I think proves that the devil card is involved. Um, he is holding his torch down. Did you remember when Boyd is running away after he escapes from Martin's yeah. prison? He takes his torch and he turns it upside down yeah. and, he, and he douses it in the earth. Mm -hmm. And Martin is chained up in the cave. I mean, mm -hmm. if, that a, if that isn't a signal to say the devil card is involved in this, uh, that's, that's what I'm going with. So anyway, let's scroll down a little bit and let me show you this art sculpture because I believe that this is the biggest clue to the players in the game right wow. now. So based on what I've told you, what do you think? Like, I think the art sculpture, it's an obvious clue. Like, why would you put a random art sculpture in the front of Colony mm -hmm. House, have Jade reference it, have it in the background of so many shots? I believe that this tells us the players. So you've got the big wheel, that's the mom. You've got the two small wheels, those are the twins. And you've got the flapping ribbons over it as the sea monster okay. and the man in black that his pet sea monster is controlling things he uses it to control stuff that's why you see these black tendrils everywhere because that's the that's the power of the sea monster so and let me know if i'm if i'm taking too long and you want to wrap things up no anything. no you got it you good? um i'm 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 referencing something else but I, I i spent i did spend some time looking at this right and i couldn't get anything from it and i was like you know what it's, it's going to take away from the other you know theories that i had uh but i did you're right it is front and center uh people and i know just from how you know when they when you add clues to something you try to put clues somewhere that is in plain sight but hard to you know you know sort of break down and this is it was impossible to break down i mean it seems random it seems not important but um looking at it in this in this clear shot uh you're right there's a lot going on that seems like it, it means something i didn't realize there was hands on there and even you know the, the the hand and the palm facing this way and then even seems like a sort of closed hand here and then another glove here yeah 
Uh, I haven't been able to figure out what the hands mean. It might just be people like despairing. It's a common p piece of like iconography. People's hands sort of reaching up is sort of like a hell. You're stuck in hell. And you're trying to get out. Um, I also found that Beerthuk artwork or Beerthuk inspired artwork, they often um, used hands to represent the antlers of the caribou, which mm. they would, uh, that they would hunt. So I was wondering if the, they also put in some hands to reference the Beerthuk's um, uh, antler hand art that they've made in the past. Um, but that's, in my opinion, that's what that is signaling. You got the big wheel and the two small wheels and the flapping cloth to represent the players. Um, so anyway, let's keep scrolling down. Now this scene, people think I'm crazy for, for thinking what I'm thinking about it, but I believe it's the, it was the most obvious clue yet. And this is what made me think that the witch is definitely a part of this mythology. Mm -hmm. So right before you see this scene on the bus, there is a book shown on a, on a, on a, um, on a seat and it's called crumbs, right? And oh, I think that that's saying, okay, guys, here's some breadcrumbs. Yeah. Look at this scene and see if you can figure out what we're trying to tell you. So this is what I think it's telling us, okay? You got the black headphones and the white headphones. Okay. That is signifying the moon and the sun players, the boy in white and uh, his equivalent um, twin. You've got the pink scarf in the background. Now that pink scarf, um, throughout the series, whenever the mother is shown, she is actually um, coated in pink. So a lot of the a lot of the objects that they have were like two things next to it, and then the pink one, uh, and then the third thing is often pink. And when you zoom in on that scarf, when it scrolls past it, you see the camera very quickly pans past it. There's a stick figure, and it looks like a witch. Now I, I don't have the the originals, um, but I believe it's pretty clearly outlined. Those the scratches that were on it. I think it's supposed to signify a witch. And obviously the fourth one in the corner with the trailing cables again. I think it's to signify the man in black and his sea monster and the tentacles of the jellyfish. Uh, but anyway, look, that's that one's probably the most out there one, but I believe mm -hmm. it backs up what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, well, we and know, we know, and I and I, I mention this a lot um, just when I'm doing on my theory videos that, you know, the director and even the showrunner, you know, said that everything is there for a reason. Everything is placed mm -hmm. specifically. I mean, we've like I referenced before, we've seen the uh, poems on the board uh, in the diner and at the mm -hmm. clinic. And even at the at the the clinic as well, which is an old school, we see there's the alphabet, you know, on the above the one of the chalkboards, I believe, in the basement. And mm -hmm. there's a, you know, B, C, and there's certain ones that you can pick out that's missing. And someone else pointed out on Reddit, Reddit that the V I C T O R is missing, and, and if you put it together, it's Victor. So yeah. of course, it makes sense that every scene is set up to have something in it that someone can take away from uh and, and i yeah. believe that you have done that well let's see i mean some people think i mean i got a lot of um a lot of flack for this this image <laughs> and putting it on the theory boards trust me people are like you are crazy man this is yeah. the most ridiculous <laughs> thing i've ever heard and we'll see if i'm right we'll see um okay so this is another shot that i think is just so obviously trying to signal us something and this is when uh, Mr. Chen and the nurse, who unfortunately she was in season one so briefly that I've forgotten her name, but she is wearing pink. Again, whenever mm -hmm. something's representing the witch, you got the pink. You got the two sides, the black and the white. You got Mr. Chen, he's wearing full black. And do you know what Mr. Chen says when he's listening, uh, when, he, when he's hearing voices? He starts, he looks around and then he, do you know what he says? He says, I want to see my son, mm -hmm. which is the witch who's been, who's been keeping her son is being kept from her and she can't get to him in this game. And she's not being able to see him because he's been trapped kind of like Martin has for so long. And look in the background, you've got the yellow light trapped underground and above it, the, the white light, the unlit moonlight above it. Uh, the, uh, it's the ball there. That is to okay. suggest the moon is free moving around. That's the boy in white wandering around. And then there's his son equivalent who's trapped in a box underground I believe that the man in black has had the boy trapped for, for like basically the whole game uh, of this game and uh, the witch is trying to get to him. Uh, wow. And that's what I think this, this symbolizes. So um, I believe that the two teams, they take turns picking people from the real world and it tends to be people who are about to die. I mean, you've got Jade, drunk di driver, Donna, drunk driver. You've got the Matthews family being distracted by the, the, the fight between the kids at the back. You've got the Boyd family being distracted because Boyd's given his boat key at that very moment. You've got Katri about to commit suicide, and then suddenly he's he doesn't, and a voice talks to him. 
You got uh, Tilly, who's going to die of disease. I think that this is the witch's selections. She's picking mm. people just before they die because at least they get a chance to live in Fromland. And that is why she only picks people who are about to die. I think the man in black, he picks people who he feels like. He doesn't care what if they're living a full okay. life. Or not. So so on that part, so you think that they both pick different people at different times? different times sometimes together yeah. and you know i had asked um when i interviewed um pega gofari who plays fatima on the show i asked her you know how come her character seemingly came alone you know mm. uh and she she said there was an answer to it uh she said it hadn't been revealed on the show mm. yet but yeah. she said she was her character was coming from a big change in her life yeah, right. I saw I saw that. And actually, that's something the showrunners said themselves. They said there's something that these people have had happen that sets them up to be taken to this place. Mm -hmm. I believe it's because they're about to die. But I've also noticed that a common thread uh, is that they might be feeling regret, mm -hmm. potentially. Um, and it may be that Bacta is driving. She's distracted because she's about to retire. And she mm -hmm. and she, and there's a there's a remember they drive through a rainstorm. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be that that coach went off the road and everyone was going to die and the witch was like right i'm taking those people uh anyway let's keep going so you see those black pincers it's supposed to look like smoke mm -hmm. but that that looks like someone picking a car off the road but from yeah. a crash i believe mm -hmm. that that's someone uh that's the witch picking people who are have died or just about to die I can't decide which. Yeah, that was that was an early theory that, you know, kind of like on the lost. If you if yeah. people are up to the you know, lost, you know, it was kind of like a purgatory or right a place you yeah. go to right before you die. Also, I saw that in uh, I don't know if you follow the Netflix series Alice in Borderland. No, um, I haven't seen that. One. That's the same type of deal. They were kind of they were, you know, surrounded by people in in Tokyo and then the next minute they were someplace else and it was, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the two seasons you find out they're in this in-between land before they yeah. pass. Yeah. And I believe in this case, they're in the Beothuk spirit world, which is actually part of the Beothuk religion as well. They believe that there's a spirit world that people get taken to. Uh, they also actually believe that birds carry people, uh, carry the souls of people. But anyway, let's keep going down. Sorry, I, I, I went on a bit of a tangent there. So here's something else I found really interesting. There are so many checkered shirts, checkered floors everywhere. I believe that is to symbolize the board game. I have so many screenshots of checkered floors in every house, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So many checkered blankets. It's just, that is the pattern. It's either the set designer has a real passion for checkered things <laughs> or it's an intentional clue. So I believe this is part of the game and it may be played on a game board because I don't believe they're playing with the Tarochi rules. So this card game, it was an Italian card game invented in the 1450s and there's only one italian on the ship and that is the captain john cabot that is why they have an italian card game in um in newfoundland with them at the time and i believe that the man in black he sees this card game and he's like you want me to save your son well you got to beat me in a game you beat me in a game then i will save your son and you can go back home wow. and that and that is that is the whole game and 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 then but he doesn't know the rules because he's a he, you know this is just he just saw it there he sees mm -hmm. the sun and the moon, which is related to their religion. And he's like, and he, maybe he likes what the devil card looks like. He's like, is this me or something? I don't know how they're going to do it. But I believe that they use the tarot cards. And every person there is represented by one. So they influence people with voices and visions. Um, I believe that every single monster that we see other than Martin is possessed by the crows. And actually, I believe that part of the spell that created the the monsters by uh, from the man in black is that because crows don't have teeth and the monsters do when you see when you see uh this isn't you don't need to scroll because this isn't in the thing this is in episode seven you see that when he gets the autopsy he drops a tooth from his hand did you notice that when w w when what autopsy? The autopsy of smiley you know when okay they kind of open uh there's a scene where they flash to his hand and he's dropped a tooth like a human tooth, not his own tooth, like a human tooth is just randomly lying next to a wallet beside him. And I believe that that tooth was part of the spell that the Beothuk used to mix the crows with a human body part to create the monsters. And that's why he's got a tooth. Mm. And so you, you mean when he was, when Smiley was still outside or when he was in the clinic? Uh, when he was in the clinic. Okay. Uh, when, they, when they, when they, when they cut him open and he, he like his, his hands go like that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Then the, then you see the tooth, it zooms in on his hands and you can see a random tooth and it's like a bloody tooth as well mm. next to his hand. I believe that that's part of the spell. I mean, it's a kind of a side note. So I believe that the witch is Donna. I believe that Donna 
is the one who looked after um, uh, Victor for 40 years. And then she somebody, somebody had to. Thank you for yeah. saying it. Somebody had to. <laughs> yeah. He's had his memories messed with. He doesn't remember a thing. He has to write everything down. People think that he's been traumatized and that's why he can't remember stuff. I believe that Donna was like, right, I've lived here for 40 years. I'm immortal in this game and I want to create, I want to live. I want to have a life. I'm going to start playing again. I'm going to take my next turn and I'm going to make Colony House. We're going to have this free for all. That's why she gets so upset when everyone dies because she is trying to create a life for herself within this world. Mm -hmm. But she knows that Victor's going to give the game away. So she takes his memories of her. Maybe mm -hmm. she takes all his memories because he's traumatized by everything he's been through over the 40 years. But wow. she she treats him like a mom. You see her talking to him about the peaches and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I believe that. And, and here's the thing. Have you seen Donna's photo of her sister and her? Mm -hmm. Now, I noticed you said that the sister looks a bit like one of the monsters. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're right. I had a look and they look pretty similar. I put them next to each other and stuff. And I think I, I did a poll on Reddit and it was like, more people said no than yes, but the majority was like, it looks like it could be. So yeah. it's inconclusive. Mm -hmm. But I believe that that picture was taken years ago, like 1970s. Mm -hmm. And that was, and, and she was with Victor running around um, as part of this Victor game. took the picture, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then I believe that the corner is ripped. I believe that's because little Victor's there in the corner, like oh. poking his head out. And that's why the corner is ripped. And, uh, yeah, that's what that's what I believe. I believe Donna has been the witch the whole time. I think she's the one sending visions to Jay to scare him from trying to figure out what's going on because she just wants everyone to live in this creepy town with the talismans, mm -hmm. have, you know, and, and just have a nice crazy colony, smoke weed, whatever life. That's what she wants right now. That's why when um, when uh, Jim comes to her and he's like, "Oh, we heard this voice," she's, she's like, like, "Leave it alone. Don't, go, don't yeah, tell yeah. anyone." You know, with Boyd. Uh, a lot of the stuff that happens when Donna doesn't know about something, that's when bad stuff happens. When she knows yeah. about something, she's controlling stuff. Yes. And I don't know. I believe that Donna's the one who trapped Martin. And he, that's how he knows about Abby because she goes back to visit him every now and again, you know, and talks to the, sees if he's possessed or not. And if he's not possessed, she talks to him. You're you right. Know? No, that's a good point about Donna because, you know, she comes and goes, right? We, we, we just yeah. assume she's at the colony house. Yeah. And one, one of the theories that I was trying to figure out was the order of arrival, right? He's the earliest. She's the and, earliest arrival outside yeah. of Victor. She's the earliest. And it seemed, you know, when Boyd, I mean, that's really when you get a gist of just, you know, that timeline. You see Boyd come into town with his family. You see, um, you know, Father Katri come out. And then when they're hiding that night, you see Donna there. Right. Yeah. And, and Dale. Right. Dale is yeah. there as well. Yeah. And so I'm like, man, these two people have been, you know, had to be for a long time. And I was like, Donna could have easily came before Father Katri. Right. Yeah. Um, but then I was like, wait how were they there right like you know like you know like sort of like what was their background about them and even though we hear a little bit about father country we only see the picture about donna and i was like there's no pictures in her house there's no picture in the room you know it it, it kind of seemed a little bit off and i and i did see that picture um through somebody else posted it and i was like wow well this is the picture i've been looking for but she doesn't talk about it like everybody else and she doesn't go through the grief like everybody yeah. else does about it. I mean, she brought it up, but it she didn't really seem that sad about it. I don't um, think it's her story. I think that exactly. woman in the picture, I think that's that woman's story. Mm -hmm. I think that's the real Donna. She took her name and she mm -hmm. took her story after she died. And that's how she introduces herself. Her real name is not Donna. She's the witch. And she's been around for ages. Uh, there was something else that made me so sure she was the witch, but I've forgotten what it was now. Um, uh, also, too, talking about the witch, uh, you know, in that, like I said, uh, episode seven, Elgin was in the bathtub, right? So, yeah. you know, now we know that there are visions, right? That you yes. can have visions, or I call them daymares, right? Yeah. Uh, and started when you see the the music box, uh, mm. but it 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 would have to be, let's say, it is a real witch or a real something, someone there, right? And yeah. who knew about it, right? There, it had to be somebody from the colony house or someone who controls the colony house. Well, um, I will get into that in a minute because <laughs> I have okay. a very convincing theory, I believe, on what's going on with these visions people are having. Okay. So, but anyway, I'll come on to that. So, I throughout this series, I see anchors in a lot of places. So you see yeah, that top image there? Yep. That looks like an anchor carved into the wall. 
next to the jellyfish stain. So if you're wondering where the jellyfish stain came from, it's right, right, right there on the right. You've also got the anchor on Christie's rock. Uh, you got the anchor on Martin's tattoo, mm -hmm. and I believe you got two mirrored anchors on mm -hmm. the talisman as well. Mm -hmm. I believe that those are, those are anchors. Now the 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 symbols in some of the you know talismans and runes, as I always call them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was studying that a lot, um, mm -hmm. and so that is the it looks like the Elder Fufnark language of the Vikings, and it does equate to some of the symbols. Now, there is a symbol of fertility uh, that is pretty much what we see here. And that kind of led me to the theory before that someone was probably going to have a kid. Right. Uh, and I, I, I connected it with Fatima because I thought at the time I thought that that was the name for the goddess of fertility in, I believe, either the Indian or another religion. Sure. Uh, but. But um, but so that led me to there. So I wasn't I was actually happy that I kind of caught that. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was uh, it, but you, it is a difficult one to to connect because the Vikings and, and it kind of it kind of stops after a certain point. You know, it doesn't really well, connect in with the story anymore. The Vinland Vikings were as part of my theory, they were there. So it may be that some of the Viking religion mm -hmm. made its way into this potentially. I don't know yet. It may be that like maybe some of the runes, like maybe they use some Viking runes mm -hmm. as well because because the bear thick were there. But what, what I believe these anchors represent are cursed items, basically. Items that okay. belong to them and a person from the 1860s. That is my mm -hmm. belief, okay? So, and and I'll, I'll, I'll come to why I think that in a minute. But remember, we've got Tabitha's, uh, Jim's bracelet that he lost 17 years ago. And that's yeah. a thread that they started and they stopped. I've been trying to yeah. find so much more information about the bracelet. It is just yeah. nothing. They they, they brought it up clue. so much. One clue. But we also got the music box. That's another sort of specific item. You've got the dummy. Mm -hmm. I believe that there are cursed items that belong to people in this game. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's what's uh, bringing people there as well. I believe that when they've lost something that also belongs to their tarot equivalent, um, but anyway, I'll get on to that. So I believe that the monsters that we're seeing, they're possessed by the moon crows and the moon team. The worst people that Martin's talking about for him are the witches because he's been trapped by them for so long. The witch and her spider people. Um, and uh, I believe that during the day, the, the, the monsters turn into crows and they fly around okay. and they learn people's names. And they I'm find with you out on that. Yep. And uh, so one person pointed out, well, what about uh early on when they didn't have the talismans surely the crows would know where everyone's uh hiding places were exactly now i would say a they clearly like to play with their food because there's no reason for them to walk either and i believe their purpose is not to kill yes, their purpose yeah. is to cause fear and if you mm -hmm. kill everyone immediately you don't get to give everyone fear so if you leave them hiding at night thinking any moment they might get killed that's a more effective way of gathering fear exactly and i actually believe that that is the point system in this game that the crows they need to collect fear i believe okay. that the worms need to cor correct uh, collect pain or suffering of some kind i believe the the rats the sun rat team they need courage and that's mm -hmm. why you always see when boyd is being brave or when Vic even now in this episode victor's being brave and he's got a new yellow jacket on and we've got um ethan being brave, wearing yellow. He wears yellow almost all the time. And then when he's scared and he admits it to Donna that he's been scared for a little while, that's when he was wearing that blue shirt over it. Oh. And then after he has his chat with Donna, boom, he's back to wearing yellow again. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the clothes that people wear represent their state of mind if they're feeling afraid or if they're feeling scared or if they're being influenced by one of these deities or another. And actually, now that I've seen episode seven, I believe that they collect it in their bodies. Remember, Donna said, the uh, fear lives inside you. Mm -hmm. She says that to Ethan. Why would she say that? That's such a random thing to say when you think about it. What does fear lives inside you mean, right? I believe that the each different team collects a liquid representing liquid fear, uh, liquid pain, liquid um, courage, or liquid uh, hope. I believe the witch's one is hope. Um, that's the red-pink uh, color. And, um, and I believe that they have to fill a lake of tears. So there is some sort of vessel that they need to fill. I think it's the gallbladder because they need to regurgitate it up and spit it 
as crows into this thing. Okay. And then whoever fills it first wins. And we're going to see um, other liquids. I think eventually we're going to see like four vessels all in like the middle of the forest. And one's like half full and one's going to be like all the way full. One's going to be black. I don't know if maybe the teams, they share a pot. So maybe maybe uh, maybe there's only two vessels and one has like the yellow bile and the black bile in it. Um, have you heard of the four humors before? No. Okay, so in um, alchemy, uh, they believed that there were four humors. There were like four liquids in the body. It was black bile, yellow bile, uh, blood, and phlegm. And I believe that they're using those to okay. represent like the liquids that they gather. So I think liquid fear is the yellow one, clearly. And then I wonder if the blood worms, because they're in the blood, I guess it's the blood that they collect. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be blood. And then I guess the rat and uh, the 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 the, the 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 son of the witch and the witch i'm guessing that they're gathering the phlegm and the the black bile maybe um okay. we'll have to see how that works i think it's the animals that deposit this liquid as well i don't think it's necessarily the monsters go off somewhere and do it this is just a theory of mine um there's no there's no real evidence for it but i think that it makes sense well with the addition of the bile that they found inside the creature right and and yeah. try, i was thinking trying to connect that as well like what mm -hmm. You can't use bile for anything, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, even if you know you you sort of use it as a weapon against them, I mean, what could it symbolize, you know? Uh, I mean, other than it is just nothing, you know. So it has yeah. to be something like you said. Um, I'm I'm happy to hear you mention the Lake of Tears. I was a big fan of thinking that most of the information we needed was in that first episode, you know. Oh yeah. Um, and and I really was spending a lot of time trying to figure out from that story of the Lake of Tears and Norman. And, mm -hmm. you know, I did come across the name Norman on the map in Boyd's office. Yeah. And there's a lot of names crossed out. Right. So I see yeah. Jade and Toby and Toby's crossed out because he's obviously dead. Right. But Jade yeah. is not. Right. And so mm -hmm. if you look at the Norman name, it's not crossed out. Yeah. Uh, but it would it doesn't it doesn't add up to where he would be. And, um, you know, no one mentioned him if his name was on the board. You know, he would have been, yeah. oh, yeah, there was a guy named Norman here. So it was kind of, it was kind of yeah. empty. Yeah, the board, the board, I've tried to find clues in the board. I think it's a, like a big sort of thing to get people to focus on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and so that they forget everything else that's in the room. Um, but anyway, if we scroll down, I'm going to show you something cool. I believe that this image here is probably the biggest clue to the players in the game. So you've mm -hmm. got, look, you've got the blue and the yellow curtains there on the left. Ooh. And that represents the moon and the sun. And then off to the right, a little bit apart from them is the witch. That's coated pink. And, that, mm -hmm. um, and, and then you look at the bags. You've got these twin little suitcases there. And then you've got the open bag that Tabitha's got. I believe those are the twins and their mother. Okay. That's, my, that's just my opinion that that's sort of what they're trying to signal here. And look, here is maybe where you can see very clearly the color scheme in full effect, literally everyone wearing blue in this scene where Sarah is getting attacked by Kenny. I believe it's fear. They're scared of her. Here where they're fighting over the food, um, it, they're all wearing blue. And even in this image, you can see here where they have all the different wires. Mm -hmm. There are the three key colors that they keep signaling. Blue, yellow, and red mm -hmm. slash pink. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the colors of this show, and they represent different members of a team, in my opinion, and the black represents the man in black so anyway um i got some theories on victor's timeline um i believe that it was his mom who betrayed everyone in order to keep her son alive um and i believe christopher is alive and he is in the tower but this is really just theoretical to be honest i don't have any strong evidence for it i just believe that if the devil has a history of making deals with mothers potentially she made a deal saying you let my son stay safe tonight and I will give up everyone and you can kill me. I know you've seen episodes eight and nine, and I'm sure that they give you some more information about that at some point. So I may be wrong, but that's where my theory is headed. Um, you know, and if we see Donna, if we see Donna running around in the background and that's a big reveal, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, she's a witch or she's one of the witch's minions. It's yeah. one or the other. She's, a more, she's lived 40 years. I guarantee you that. Yeah, I guarantee you. somebody. I, I knew from the beginning with this type of show that there has to be people in the town that have to be in on it. I mean, and yeah. we've heard Randall say that, and I did agree with him. I just don't think he went about it the right way, right? 
Mm. Um, and you're right. I did see uh, episodes eight and nine. Right. Uh, and um, without spoiling anything, uh, I do think that you are on the right track uh, with it, um, you know, mm. especially right. since the witch has been revealed. Right. That's something we all saw. Right. That there is this. <laughs> woman that drowned Elgin and we don't know where she came from but she's at the colony house right I think I know where she comes from man I think I can tell you the exact town she came from I think I can tell you even what religion she is and I can tell you what her job is in my let's, opinion let's I can... hear it okay so but I need a, I need to get to it I'm sorry okay. uh, but actually it's in this next bit okay. so this is what I believe every single flashback that we have seen that isn't mm -hmm. like a victor one every vision that we've seen of the past I believe it's from the years 1864 mm -hmm. to 1870-something, okay? We got the Civil War soldier in 1864 mm -hmm. or, 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 you know, the later years. Some point in the Civil War, it started 1864, right? Then we got the ballerina. Now, the, there's a very famous American ballerina show. It was a, It's the first ever American musical. It was probably the greatest ballet of American history, and it was formed in 1866. It's mm. called the Black Crook, and it's about a man who does a deal with the devil. I believe mm. that the ballet dancer that we're seeing is from that ballet, and that she is from 1866 as part of the traveling troupe of the Black Crook. And I think the okay. Civil War soldier is also part of this. And now I believe that the lady in the kimono that we saw trying to drown Elgin is a Shinto prin princess from the uh, Wakamatsu colony. There was a Japanese colony in 1869 in uh, California. They were the first Japanese people to ever arrive in the United States. They created their own farm. They dressed in Japanese clothing. Um, I believe they followed the Shinto religion. And uh, they, their farm died out after like five years because um, some people poisoned their land with iron or something and they dammed their rivers. It was horrible. But I believe that this, these writers, they care about American history and they want to cover as much of the story of American immigration as possible from the day, from the real true discovery of America by John Cabot all the way up to the Civil War in the mass immigration time. The 1860s was the greatest time of migration in, in, in American history. And that is why they've chosen it as to have the flashback. I believe there's two timelines, two games happening at the same time where they're playing with different cards on this on this game board, okay? I believe it's either deep underground or on the edges of each other. Like, so you know the infinity symbol with the line yeah. between it? I yeah. believe that that is the map of Fromland. I believe there's mm. two time zones. That's how the loop works. Okay, yeah. all right. That's, yep, wow. And I believe that it's either deep underground like Victor's spiral in the corner or it's on the edge. I believe that Martin's prison lies in between those two. And that's why when Boyd leaves the door, he leaves that space and he goes back to his own time zone. And that's why suddenly it's all ruins behind him. Oh, okay. That's my opinion. Um, and uh, here's what's interesting about this. You, you need to see my examples of the tarot cards to believe this. But Martin has a circle cut into his arm in the scene where he dies How, did you did you catch that on his arm like a bloody circle cut there you know i i, I did I, I tried to watch it over and over again i did but you know i was paying more attention to boyd uh yeah and i yeah. you know i did see and that's what they wanted you to do right and i did yeah. see because it was just quick flashes of him i mean he's covered in blood and stuff but yeah if you go back and look at it later you will see a circle cut into his arm it's a very vague clue for which tarot card he represents which is mm. the world but you know what's also represented on the world card? A dancer. And I believe oh. that, um, and, and you know, in episode seven, there's a scene where um, Ethan is talking to Mrs. Tien and mm -hmm. they have this completely pointless conversation where he's saying, I think we should flip them now. And then Mrs. Tien is like, oh, they're not ready. Mm -hmm. That's because they're talking about the flipping of the card. So in tarot, if you have the card in reverse, it's okay. the bad yeah. news. If you got oh. death, if let's say you get the death card, right? It could be good news or bad news. It depends which direction is pointing. Yes. Is it is it upside down or is it facing the right way? So I believe every single person that the people are seeing is a reverse tarot card in the other world. So Martin's reverse tarot card is the ballerina. Um, I believe that um, 
uh, Jade's reverse tarot card because Jade is strength. He's got the cat shirt. He holds cables in an infinity sign. Those are on the tarot card for strength. Mm -hmm. uh, the, a, a giant, like a, someone wrestling a lion. And then um, you've got this strong civil war soldier. I believe that he represents a strength card. And then you've got this Shinto Japanese prince, uh, priestess, Amiko, because they were said to be able to predict the future, which is exactly what Elgin's doing because Elgin is the um, the card that represents the future. I've forgotten what it's called off the, uh, the, off the top of my head. But because Elgin can see the future, I'm like, okay, so it needs to be something that re can represent um, the reverse of his tarot card. It needs to be something Japanese that can see the future. So I type in Japanese fortune teller, and it's like, yeah, Shinto princesses. Wow. Uh, said that they could... Um, so I believe if you see... So if you see on my list, you'll see I've assigned everyone a tarot card, and there is evidence for every single one. Every single one has an obvious, obvious association. So we'll skip the we'll skip the brothers part. So if you scroll up there to the fool, that one's super duper obvious as well. This mm -hmm. is the fool. The fool is Boyd. Okay. <laughs> Every time he picks up a bag, even if it has handles, he picks it up like a bundle. bundle. Mm -hmm. Look, look there in the in mm -hmm. the middle top. That bag has handles, but he's picked it up like a bundle. Then you've got him picking up the the um the uh, talismans in his shirt mm -hmm. like a bundle. And what does the fool do? He follows a little dog around. Mm -hmm. And what is Boyd doing? He's constantly following dogs. He's even jumping sort of over this branch, sort of like he's leaping off a cliff, which is the, fool, the fool's idea is that it follows a little dog off the cliff. That's what Boyd does. He follows the dog. Wow. So I believe Boyd is the fool. We've got, I've, I've got like more of these cards. They just didn't. You know, okay. Now this, this is what I was going to ask you too, because in, in my Viking theory, um, you know, they said that Odin, you know, uh, hung himself upside down yeah. to get the, the information for the runes for the people. Right. And yeah. so that's that that led me deeper. Right. When I heard yeah. about that and about because it was the, the tree and also those those F symbols on the on the talisman. Yeah. It, it does translate to the elder Fufnart language as an yeah. ash tree or world tree. Yeah. It, and, and I think that's why they were comfortable putting a man hanging upside down was mm -hmm. because they thought people are going to think this is Viking related. So this isn't going to give it away, but it totally does. In my opinion, it was probably the, the worst decision they could have made. Look, so look at the hangman in the corner, right? It's a guy mm -hmm. hanging off a tree upside down with a halo around his head. Mm -hmm. Well, look, we've got, we've got him hanging upside down with a light uh, in his hand pointing down. That's kind of like a halo. You've got him in the top hand, left hand corner with the dream catcher behind him, oh. making it look like he's got a halo. He's climbing trees with Jade. Uh, every he's constantly got rope sort of mm. pointed towards his neck in scenes. I try to catch them. <laughs> you know, you've got rope coming down his neck. This guy's the hangman in the tarot card set, and it's obvious. Um, wow. I mean, keep now, going. I did. I did get a chance to interview Eon Bailey. Um, oh, amazing! And I asked him. I said, "Is your character a villain?" Right. That's what I asked him. Mm. And I got a big response, like, okay, like maybe, you know, he didn't answer, of course, but it was more like, like, oh, well, somebody's, you know, on to it, you know, that there's something up with my character pretty much. Well, I think Rand, I think one of the, um, one of the episode descriptions, because I do look at those because they're public. I only look at stuff that's like publicly available that the show put out, right? And they put out the descriptions of the show. So as that, so I don't consider them spoilers, but I think it says something like Jim regrets, like teaming up with Randall or something. Mm -hmm. So I think Randall gets him involved in some shenanigans that he doesn't really want to be involved in, probably something like that. Um, so I don't necessarily think Jim's a villain. I think he's going to act villainous because his belief in his World War II theory is so strong. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think he's like a true villain. He might he might do some stupid stuff, though. Yeah, we'll I, I was thinking he was a, a, a real bad guy because uh, uh, from him turning off, I feel like he purposely turned off, right? to the off-road and brought them there uh, oh, you know there was some of the early conversation before we had no found out that they had lost a son um mm -hmm. the conversations in the rv i was just didn't sit right for yeah. for what i was thinking you know as far as like you know go back to the way things were yeah. uh and even remember when we came to your parents house before right and i know this kind of seemed like a meaningless conversation and then fast forward to the bracelet right how did the bracelet get there? And so I'm like, yeah. maybe he had been there before. Maybe this was something set up by either, you know, him or some people that he's working with a third group. Right. And so that right. was sort of where I was going. Okay. And then even connected to how would the guy on the radio know his name? 
right? Yeah. Uh, because he he knows Jim. He's part of the group. Uh, but uh, there is the the debunks that that all the creatures know everybody's name, like you said, and I do believe it is the Ravens during the day. Um, and yeah. so, but 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 I like this. I like this part. Well, I'll tell you what. Look at this one. This one's kind of crazy as well. So why we have these three random crosses stacked up? Well, I think that they're there oh. to represent the. You, you kind of got to zoom in a little bit, maybe. But yeah. on his in the tarot card there in the middle. He's got like a, it's like a stick with three lines across it mm -hmm. that gets smaller Okay. and yeah. it matches. And then even the beams of the church, there's this shot where he sort of lifts his arm. You can see the, it's a similar symbol. And he's also a man of faith, which is what the Hierophant is. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and he's always seen between two gray pillars. And there are some shots where they shoot him in between the pillars of the stone circle. And you can see him mm -hmm. standing between these two gray pillars. So I believe he's the Hierophant, but there are many more. So like for, if we scroll down a little bit, I can rattle through them. Um, so look, Ethan, he's got a wizard staff. Okay, uh, yep. Um, Tabitha, she hands Katri a copy of the Bible. Um, and that's the high priestess has a copy of the Torah in her hands. Um, for the Empress, it's actually a really boring card. The only thing that's unique about it is a heart on it. And mm -hmm. Tabitha. I just Al said that about Julie. I'm like, why would Elgin even try to tell her the secret, I mean, about the 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 creature right because she doesn't do anything right she's kind of yeah. like a boring character yeah but she has these hearts on her right he in does that episode so mm -hmm. that's to signify she's the empress you got the emperor that's nathan the emperor has two goats next to him nathan looks after the two goats um we got father catcher i already told you about ellis and fatima you know that garden of eden tapestry that's mm -hmm. identical identical to the lover's card of the tarot we got back to the coach driver she must be the chariot you got jade he's got a cat shirt he wow. carries radio cables that are bent in a in a um, infinity shape, mm -hmm. and uh, he he's also per perseveres a lot, and that's mm -hmm. what the strength card is. It's about perseverance. Victor's the hermit. He lived alone for a long time. He carries a torch in key scenes. Um, the Wheel of Fortune. That's the one. It's Elgin. Elgin is the name of a famous watchmaker. He has prophetic dreams, and that stupid owl conversation that he has with Sarah. That mm -hmm. was just a clue that the showrunners were leaving because owls signify prophecy. It's like Athena. Oh. It's like Cassandra. Um, you got justice. I have no idea who that might be. There's no clues for it at all. It the says, only one I don't have, oh, I think um, they left it open for tarot theorists to put Donna in that category because she doesn't have one. Um, mm -hmm. they've left no clues for Donna either in terms of tarot. Uh, we got death. So, um, Mr. Liu, he always wears black and in all his scenes and, um, there's a king, a bishop and a knight mm. dead on the of the death card and obviously he plays chess which contains a king a bishop and a knight and also there's a black knight riding it and he says knight scary in episode two you got tilly there's a seat she's literally got triangles on her shirt and temperance is all about triangle symbols and pouring cups of water into each other and there's a seat she hands two cups of water to two different sets of people in episode two of season two you got the devil, we've already talked about that, the chain man and the Tao's torch. You got the tower, that's the guy in the radio tower. It mm -hmm. also has rain and lightning on that card, which makes me think that the tower mm -hmm. controls the weather. And Donna, when she sees that radio tower going up, she says, mm -hmm. Chris, you got it. She tells him, because I think he's possessed by spiders, that's why he's immortal too. I think she tells him, hey, Chris, you gotta, you gotta tell Tabitha to stop digging, because she knows that the monster caves underground. And and that'll send um, that'll send Jim running away, and then he won't have to hear it. But he, and she summons that storm, but Jim insists on staying with that radio, insists on staying with it. So then she has to he has to say. So I think he's the tower. Then we got Donna. She's I think she's the witch. She's the star card. She's been the longest there, other than Victor. Her sister photo has a mysterious ripped corner. Um, you know she gives a spider related dream coucher to Fatima for her birthday. Yep, that is true. You know, and I think that she cared, um, looked after Victor for these 40 years and has taken his memories, mess with him. We've got the boy in white with his two dogs. That's the moon card. we got Judgment, Sarah. She has to be judged for her crimes. That one's a bit loose. You've got Martin. He's got the circle cut into his arm. you got Randall. He's the Knight of Swords. That's this like impulsive, headstrong character. Mm -hmm. got the Five of Cups and Miss Liu with the cross around his neck. you got Christy with the, you know, the symbol that she has on her shoulder. That symbol is on the tarot card as well, the Caduceus symbol. It's oh, wow. uh healing symbol and uh she it's the cup the cups is the hearts um cups is the equivalent of hearts in modern day playing cards 
So she's the two of cups. So that's why the heart stone she has. And she also holds two cups several times in season two and season one. <laughs> also, Penny, he's got his random globe. Why has he got this random globe? Because yeah, I remember that. Yeah. He's holding a globe. Um, you got the three of mm. pentacles, Dale. He's got this big triangle network. He's, that's a sign for apathy, no motivation, poor work ethic. And then here's my reverse tarot. I, I haven't added um, episode seven into the theory because um, I've decided to let this sit at episode six. But the black crook, look it up. It's it's definitely going to feature, in my opinion. That's where the ballerina comes from. I think every single character we're going to see from now on in the visions is going to be from the 1860s. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's most of the theory. Um, I can tell you why the USA, because obviously Newfoundland is okay. not part of the USA. Um, I believe that uh, uh, Cabot came to claim um, land for the king uh, of England and to create, um, to basically create a new country for him. So it may be that the curse was like, whatever land uh, your king takes or something like that will be, cur will be cursed to have, you know, people taken from it or whatever. Or it may be um, the next day it lines up with the Jamestown's colonies war with the Native Americans there. Maybe that event made them switch their attention to the United States instead of Canada, because that's where most of the Native American atrocities were happening, potentially. Um, I believe that the spiders, they are signaling a flood, because I don't know if you know this, but when a flood is happening, spiders, they climb up into the trees and they cover them in webs. So I think that's a sign oh. that a flood is coming. Uh, now, do you think it was a giant spider? Do you actually think it was a giant spider? I don't know. I that, think that maybe Donna can turn into a giant spider. Maybe. I don't know. I know that she has spider powers. I believe also that she can heal people, which is why Ethan heals so quickly. It's why um, um, Ellis is going to heal really quickly. Mm -hmm. I believe that's why she was really upset that she wasn't here when Ellis. Well, she brought um, him Ellis food, right? She could have done something. Yeah. And, and, and he said, man, I thought we were on a food shortage, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think she's healing him somehow. I think actually she healed Fatima and gave her the ability to become pregnant as well. I think that's she's growing the vegetables, right? She's supposed to be the one who's overseeing that. So, yeah. yeah. And then I believe that the monsters from the 1950s, they've been possessed since then. This round of the game, I, I believe it's a best of five. That's my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. And I think this is the last round. And uh, I think that they be, the game has been going on since the 1950s, uh, potentially. And they're the leftover. So these are the leftover townsfolk who have been possessed by their reverse tarot cards. So every mm -hmm. single one of them is possessed by a person from the 1840s. That is why um, these people from the 1860s, they are when they see a when they see the coach. When Smiley sees the coach, he's someone with a with the mind of an oh. evil 1860s person. So he's seeing this coach. He's like, whoa, what is this? I don't know yeah. what this is. He never you know, seen because that. he's never experienced this technology. Mm -hmm. That's why they're interested. I thought it might be because they're crows as well, but um, and then there might be something there where, but but really, I think it's because they're possessed with the evil version of themselves from from the past, uh, okay. from from all those years ago. And look, and this is a big is one here. Called? Why is this show called From? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you why. I believe it's because this story is to correct the Columbus myth. I think that mm. is actually what it's about. Where are Americans from? Mm. I think the showrunners are asking people to ask yourselves, where are you from, Americans? You are not from Columbus's America. You are from Cabot's America. He was a wow. good man. He did not kill Native Americans historically, um, but there were people who did. Um, I believe that Cabot is going to be the hero in the story, or maybe not the hero, but uh, the father of the child. Um, he's the, probably the husband of Donna the witch. I believe that when... The um, Corte Real brothers came and the two ships later. Um, I, I think that it's basically say Cabot is the true European discoverer of North America. And in telling the story of the Beothuk who went extinct and had atrocities happen to them, it's also telling a realistic version of what happened to America. Mm -hmm. And I believe that by having this mirror world of the 1860s, they are also telling people, this is the country you come from. The civil war, the immigration of Japanese, of Chinese people, um, you know, black civil war soldiers. They are. I believe that this show is to is trying to correct all the American myths of what the civil war looked like, what the what America looked like. Were there black cowboys? Yes, there were. Were there Japanese people living in America then? Yes, there were. Were there Chinese people living in America? I think that people the show is asking people to say, "Where are you from? You're from America." I like it. That's I like it. I, I mean, that's 
the whole theory. Sorry if I rambled a bit. I know that took over an hour to explain. No, this. I mean, as 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 interested as we all are of this show, for the from the Frumley and the the fans of the show. Listen, this is what we've been wanting to hear. We've been looking for answers. And, you know, they've been spoon feeding us literally just little breadcrumbs and we needed to put it together. Uh, and, and I think, you know, wanted to hear your breakdown and wanted to get some answers. Uh, oh, yeah, and this definitely wrong. gives us a new direction and something to go on. You're right. I mean, you were really early with this, too. And I want to, you know, at this point, season two is, you know, coming to an end. But I remember seeing this a while ago, like you were really yeah. on to this a while ago. I've got to tell you, man, I think that the show made two major mistakes in the clues that they left for people. If they, that 1506 date, if you decide it's not um, a Native American origin, um, which I, I think it would have been very awkward for them to make it a purely Native American mm -hmm. uh, mythology. Um, I think that in making it 1506, they really left us with three people to choose from that originated mm -hmm. this story. And that mm -hmm. leads you straight to Newfoundland, straight to the Bear Thug. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you know that they colored themselves red, that's it. You see yep. those red people on the wall and then you start investigating a little further. Yep. And as for the tarot stuff, uh, the tarot cards, I think I think it's pretty much there's just too many coincidences. They're either doing it metaphorically just for fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that the game that is being played is they are being flipped. I mean, that line from Ethan where they're looking at the pancakes and he's like, they should, mm -hmm. we should flip them now. And Mrs. Yeah. Chen's like, they're not ready. That That to me confirmed it all. Um, so so let me ask you on that, right? Because I sub, sub, uh, I suspected um, Kenny's mom as well, right? Right. It, okay. just, it just wasn't it wasn't lining up with me as with the food, right? And even her, like, oh, you know, you want electricity? You know, she just flips the switch, <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. and <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it just wasn't lining up with me. And I so. Um, that's so not you, part of my theory. I think I think she's just a, a nice uh, kind of blunt lady. And I think that they just really like having her play with Jade. I remember seeing an interview where they said her friendship with Jade was because the characters had such chemistry that mm -hmm. they had decided to uh, increase the amount of like interaction those two characters okay. had. Yeah. Um, but but I may be wrong. She is a little sus with those cups of tea that she keeps giving everyone. The tea, you know? the food. I mean, <laughs> coming out with the pancakes. The pancakes was a direct, you know, red flag for yeah. me. You know, I'm like, no way, no way. And and um, also, too, you know, the fact that they keep having visions around her, right? You know, boy had two breakdowns. I call them daymares around her. Yeah. Um, and then also everything that you need is in the diner, right? Uh, sure. If you go into the back. Uh, you know, when she when Jade was looking for the symbol, when she found him drawing on a paper, she took him to the back of the diner and pulled out some books and gave him yeah. Christopher's book. Right. So she to me, you're right. She is a big player in the show that has some other side to her that we just don't know. Did you see um, what but the then, book said? Well, it, um, it was the book that he uses that he has this, that Christopher was 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 drawing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But underneath that book, there's another book. Is a yearbook. Uh, yeah, it was a yearbook. Did you see what it said on the yearbook? I could not figure it out. I knew I knew it said West. I know it said West West Canning. It was West Canning High School. Okay. Wow. Which is interesting because I was trying that to figure it out for the longest. I, and then and then the school, um, the school name though. Yeah, is on top West, of the clinic, right? Yeah. Yeah, that one some people say it says celestial high school, yeah. but I don't think that's right. I don't think but so but the alternative would be West Falls High School. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I had West that one. Canning, West Falls, maybe that lines up. Maybe that's the town that was picked up in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that um first of all, I think that the the town will um the Fromland goes to sleep for 40 years at a time, kind of like okay. it. You know how it yeah, goes to yeah. sleep every 27 Someone years? just made that reference. I don't know if it was you, but they did make a reference to um, it and um, like the monster from it and some of the creatures and things like that. And then mm -hmm. also, too, when the show was first announced, they were saying that a lot of the references were from Stephen King. Right. It's a desperation, the mist and it. Right. OK, so I think that might be it. That's like a sort of curse that recurs every uh, every 40 years or something like that. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's interesting that Victor's last year is 1978, and then the first year that people start appearing is 2018, at least the earliest that we know of, which is Donna, oh, uh, which is early 2018 that she appears. So to me, that says a 40-year gap. Now, either Donna is refusing to take another turn until she thinks Victor has lived a full life, 
mm -hmm. or or um, it's uh, it's it's the game ended when Victor's uh, when Victor's like whole family died and everyone died. That was the end of one game, and then there's like a pause of forty years, and then the new game starts. That could be the other thing. It may be that Donna didn't refuse to take a turn mm -hmm. for forty years. It may be that it's just like that game was lost. The witch lost that game, and that she managed to save Victor. Uh, or, or Victor's mom manages to save him, and then she's sort of left with him for 40 years just hanging around. And mm -hmm. uh, and then at the end of it, the game's about to start, and she takes his memories and tries to create this colony house place to live. Mm -hmm. um, and then she tries to stop everyone from leaving. I mean, even when Sarah, right? Sarah's traveling in the woods with Boyd, and then she hears a, a woman's voice, a new voice that she hadn't heard before, saying, Mr. Fish and Loaves don't mm -hmm. i was wrong you you know you, you you shouldn't be out here i think that's the witch using her inside knowledge of uh being donna to get boy to turn back because she doesn't want him learning anything about this place i actually think that donna's mission is to just keep everyone she just wants to live indefinitely she thinks there's no way of escaping she's been there over 500 years and she's just trying to create a life there now potentially I, it may I mean, be that she doesn't even remember how she got there because it's been so long. I was about to say it could be something like that too. Yeah. I um I, I do believe uh uh believe there's something up with Donna. Um and um I wanted to look at I was looking up the episode lists for the, the last couple episodes coming up because you know there has been some debate about whether or not there was magic or supernatural elements on the show. And mm -hmm. then I think now with your story and then with the witch showing up, we know that there is um, the next episode eight is called the forest for the trees. And oh. the next one is called episode nine is called ball of magic fire. So we know that there has to be some sort of magic um, in it. And then the episode 10 is titled once upon a time. Once upon a time. Oh my God. That's going to be a flashback episode, isn't it? <laughs> is it? I, I don't well, you I, haven't seen it. Have I, you seen I, it? I, yeah, I've only seen up to nine. Uh, right. I have not seen episode 10. And I think they're not, you know, I don't think they're going to, they're going to share that one. Uh, but right. um, I've also been paying attention to who directs what episode, right? Oh, yeah. So the first three, I know Jack Bender, he usually um, directs the bigger episodes. Uh, and guess who the last two episodes are directed by? Jack Bender. Yeah, right? So right. now we're back onto the storyline of the show. Everything else that's done by either Brad Turner or um, Alex LaRoche, it seems. Alex Alexandria LaRoche, they sort of deal with the people side, people episodes. But Jack gets to the storyline. So we're going to find out, uh, like you said, um, just how close to the theory you are. And I believe that there's a lot um, coming from what you said, oh, yeah. but, I think at the end of season, oh, mm -hmm. at the end of the season, we're gonna get an equivalent of the cave painting, where I it's just so. gonna be, it's they're just gonna dump some craziness. I think I saw one of the actors they were interviewed and they were asked about episode ten mm -hmm. and like what their impressions were of it, what the finale. Ooh, of that's a big question. Like. <laughs> and, and I think they were like just crazy like you just wouldn't like i don't even know but, and, and i think it's just like you know it's like a giant jellyfish floats down from the sky yeah. and it and then it cuts to black just, like that was sort of the impression they yeah. were giving that some like weirdness happens yeah. something really weird and unexplainable happens so i'm yeah. i think it's gonna be like where they see these cave paintings, like mm -hmm. look they draw look there's boats and people in mm -hmm. red and little little triangle with some crows above it and random symbols you know and some giant sort of tentacle monster thing and, and just you deep know, stuff. I think that they're going to give us a whole lot of crazy questions in the last episode and like one big reveal. I think we're going to find out that Donna isn't who she says she is. I think that we're going to see um, maybe a bit more about the monsters, learn a little bit more about what they are, who they are. And I think we're going to get a flashback to the 1860s. I really do. I think we're going to get an 1860s flashback. And probably we're going to get Victor's story sort of tied up a little bit better. Well, I will say this, and I know you said no spoilers, so I won't yeah. add any details to it. But we do get some more Victor's story in episode eight. Okay, yeah. I, someone spoiled me for one thing. I'm not going to say what it is. They forgot that I um, I was in the theory group on Discord, and they mm -hmm. they sometimes they forget that I I really don't want to talk about stuff that they've read in like the transcripts of mm -hmm. the next episodes. And uh, someone spoiled one little thing for me, so I know about that. 
but yeah. I didn't. It didn't affect my theory whatsoever. It was yeah. like about yeah. some someone that yeah. I didn't know existed existing, um, mm -hmm. and it didn't affect my theory. So that's fine. What I want is to not be spoiled, so that like I I get the answer sooner than yeah. I should. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to know when I got it. If Unfortunately, I got it. though, I, I I think they're gonna drag it out at least six seasons, right? I mean, yeah. they're gonna try to put this together. You know, and it seems like they're going to go, of course, season three, they're going to do the people episodes and they're going to do the main storyline. Yeah. And there's going to be four, five, six. But as far as right now, this is what we need right now. Right. This is going to carry us to that sixth <laughs> season with this the, trying to put this together and proving, you know, what is right about what theories, you know. Um, well, can I give and, you one theory about uh, Mario? Yeah. You might like. So, OK, this is a little spoilery because I did. I cheated a little bit by by reading about the actress's background a bit more. Mm -hmm. But I had this theory that they have this pointless fight between Kenny and um, oh my Christy? God, Christy outside the um, clinic yeah. outside because uh, outside the clinic. Um, and then Boyd has gone off to get like some tools. So mm -hmm. Marielle is sleeping alone in that building with Smiley. And I believe that the worms crawled out of Smiley while he was on the table, went up and crawled into her ear. And that's why she had that dream. I believe Elgin had the dream just because he's sensitive. He's like a fortune teller. He's got like special abilities. I think she had that vision of the ballerina. And I think that, have you seen Falling Skies? I do remember that movie, a show, a show, yes. Yeah, it was pretty good. So in Falling Skies, they have um, the girlfriend of the main character get possessed by... Um, by one of the aliens and she like speaks to them as a bad alien uh, but she's there and she's alive and then there's a love triangle going on I believe that Marielle is going to be become possessed by the ballerina no one's going to believe that she's possessed um, and that she's seeing the worms because that's one of the symptoms of coming out of uh, of withdrawing from heroin is that you feel like there's like animals and bugs crawling under your skin so they're just being like it's just withdrawals it's just withdrawals I believe she's going to become the ballerina. And when I look this up, her last role she played was a ballerina. Wow. That was the last role she played. She said as well in an interview that she pursues roles that involve dancing. Mm. And, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she's also 39 years old. And Christy is 29 or 26. 26, I think. Wow. So that's a big that's a big age gap between the actors. Super big, right? <laughs> and I, I think it's because they had to cast a wide net for someone who's classically trained in ballet mm. and is a sufficiently um, expert and experienced actor to take on a big role whilst also fitting within their budget. And that is why when they eventually settled on someone, it ended up being someone who's slightly awkwardly mm. aged for the relationship. I mean, that is almost twice as old when you think yeah. about it. It is. Um, uh, I was trying to figure out what was up with Mari's character as well. Yeah. Um, and you're right. That scene did happen where she is going through that withdrawal and it's a fever dream. Mm -hmm. And um, I will say from what I've seen in uh, the episodes eight and nine, you're you're close to that. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll find out. But I, <laughs> that's that's where I'm heading. Those are yeah. all my theories. I've just vomited every no, this is great. craziness yeah. in my brain at you. And I mean, look, it's a lot of work. I mean, I, I I realized that. Tell me, my I was like overclocking my brain just for the Viking theories, right? And then <laughs> I can really appreciate the time, the length, the detail, and the references that you put together. And that's why I wanted to really, you know, bring that to light. You know, regardless if it's right or wrong or whatever, I think it's great that people from all walks of life can come together and really talk about something and. And even, you know, have a little bit of that history in it. Like we done, we learned something, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think this, this writer, John Griffin, first mm -hmm. of all, huge respect for the guy. He's created an a incredibly intricate world. If, if what I'm thinking is right, he clearly has a huge appreciation for history and Native American culture um, from what I'm guessing. And um, just to say, I know some people will be listening to me and be extremely annoyed at the confidence in which I'm speaking about my theories. Trust me, I don't think, <laughs> I'm yeah. right. I just it just helps me yeah. in fun, trying to yeah. figure things out. Yeah. I be I have to be confident in my in what I think is happening so that other things can slot in. So I could be completely wrong about this. Like the mm. tarot stuff, it may just be metaphor. They're just sort mm. of metaphorically adding these little clues to these characters, and it's not a game of tarot. Um, it may be that it it's, could be a game though. It just you're right. It might yeah. not. It, it's like it could be one detail off, but you could be two out of three. You know, maybe. As far, you know, and I look. I don't. I don't think I'm 100 percent right. But it is fun to think about. It's mm -hmm. my procrastination. 
Um, I actually wrote a book about missing people from history, taken wow. to like another world. And that's where my interest in this came from. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not doing this to plug my book at all. I'm not even going to mention it on this show. Um, I just, that is what made me love this show so mm -hmm. much because yeah. I have a, I have an Excel spreadsheet with 300 different groups of people that mysteriously went missing from history. And John Cabot was one of them. Wow. And that is when I was like, okay, 1506, that's pretty close to when he went missing. Let mm -hmm. me go look into him again. And it all came together. Yep. So we'll, we'll see if I'm right. I, I hope I am. I know a lot of people don't like the tarot stuff, but we'll see. We'll, we'll yeah, see. well, I think, you know, like in, in the U.S., you know, they kind of, you know, really downgraded tarot, you know, to make it look like it's just, you know, this back alley thing. But yeah. I think the information even you gave me was like it was one of the first card games and, and how it connects with even, you know, like you said, the Joker in our normal 52 deck. I thought that was very interesting. So we just have to be educated more on what's going on and these these things that are around us every day that we don't realize. Um, I did want to say one eight, by the way, 78 cards means 78, 78 cards. people okay. in from that. Oh, wow. That's wow. what I think the number is. I think there's seven or is it 75? Anyway, the number of tarot cards, mm -hmm. I think, directly corresponds to the number of people in Could from be. that. And I also think it's the number of monsters that there are as well. 78 monsters or included in yeah. the 78? I, I, th I think that there are 78 monsters as oh, well. Including, like you said, the ravens, yeah. the spiders, the bread, like everything. Yeah, potentially. Okay. I think I think that might be it because there's, yeah. Well, one one detail too that I wanted to bring up too that I that I learned right, and and it's just from observation. I mean, you can see it in season one, you can see it in season two, right? Um, and I'm not sure. I don't have a complete theory yet, but I think it will tie in a lot with uh, some of the stuff you said later, as like mm -hmm. season three come around and they start to release cool. information. I've noticed that uh, Victor doesn't will not go into anybody else's house. Oh, that's and. I, I I'm not sure. I I've seen Donna go into the uh, uh, police station. Yeah, she also she's also like in episode seven. She's putting food in salt, and that's why mm -hmm. she's not there when Ellis gets stabbed. She's at the Matthews house, mm -hmm. yep. which used to be whose house? Whose house did they move into? Is it they Sarah's moved into the Kenny's mom? They went, they went oh, to Kenny's, Kenny's mom's, mom's house, house, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, so that's that's it. Yeah. And, so, so she goes. And also, too, I think, and I have to look back at the scene. I think Donna was in, has to be invited in, right? I think there's a thing oh. where she's like, "Can I come in?" Like, I think it's something like that. Uh, really? Because later, yeah. So I'm not sure how it connects, but I've noticed that Victor doesn't go in anybody's house, and I, and it, it'll tie in with something you see it later in episode eight. Um, right. So, but he just, but that's I feel like that has something to do with you know the monster theory, you know. So. Mm -hmm. So that's another clue. That, right, but... I, I, that's very interesting. You know, I, I do a rewatch every few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm starting to skim through some of it. Yeah. Uh, I've seen <laughs> it so many times now. Mostly I'm pausing and looking at stuff in the background, seeing if yeah. it's like, like the tarot stuff, for example. Like I only done one watch through when I was aware of the tarot stuff. So, uh, but I will keep an eye out for that. That's mm -hmm. super interesting. So if mm -hmm. she's, so I guess maybe she's affected by the talismans too. Mm -hmm. And maybe she has to be let in as well, just because mm -hmm. she is a monster. Technically she's one of the, you know, possessed sort of things. Uh, sometimes I think that the witch is not actually Donna. She's just possessing Donna, Donna's mm -hmm. body. Uh, that could be it as could well. Be. I don't know. And, it, and we'll like see. you said, the, the, um, you, you call her the, the Asian kimono uh, yeah. witch could be yeah. the form and came so. out in the yep okay it could be it could be we'll see i mean if we get a flashback of some japanese people farming mulberry trees and mm -hmm. having a lake of fish um there's actually a very famous jap the first japanese person to be buried in the united states her name was okay and she came from that um she came from that town if her name turns out to be okay mm -hmm. uh i That's guarantee you they're, re they're referencing that that town yeah. And okay. if we see something about the Black Crook, like ballet musical as well, I'll be so happy that I guess that um, because it's it's it would confirm this deal with the devil theory of mine that I've well, got. Going. Well, look, I mean, this has been great talking to you. Uh, you know, thank you for putting the time in to give us some answers that we've been looking for. Uh, you know, like we said, regardless if you if you're right or wrong, I think it's been great talking to you and, and great Thanks, to hear man. your theories. Uh, well, you and you know, we have to. For sure. I found it very interesting. Some of the stuff you were talking about, like, and the, definitely that Donna's sister's photo 
that mm-hmm. looks like that woman, man, I think you're onto something <laughs> there. I, ser- I I spent way too much time looking at these two women's faces. Yeah, I, something's oh, up man. with that. Yeah. yeah, so we gotta we gotta lock back in at, 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 after the season finale. We gotta do a um a, you know okay, a recap yeah. of season right. finale and just take pick up from where we left off here this conversation to where we're at at season ten. Awesome, man. Awesome. All right. So look, um, you want to give out your your Twitter? Uh, let them know where they can find you at. Uh, uh, on Reddit for sure is where you can read the full theories in the from uh, TV Epics group. Uh, and then you can find it. Let, let them know where they can find your Twitter at. Sure. So my my Twitter's uh, my first name, my surname with a number one next to it. So Tara Matthew one on Reddit. I go by my full name, my full real name, but squished together. So no space in between it. My Instagram, you'll be able to find it. You start typing in my name. It's a pretty unusual name. It will come up. I'm verified on there. And uh, yeah, uh, to be honest, I don't tweet or Instagram much about from. I'm mostly on Reddit and Discord. Mm-hmm. I, I recommend you join the Discord group. Are you are you part of it, man? Are you on the Discord? You know, I, 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 I was new on Reddit and I did a little dibble dabble on Discord. But, you know, if you got, if you bring me in, I can get more on there. I mean, I don't I don't use it for anything else. I literally only use it for yeah, from from. discussions. <laughs> yeah. But it's good. There's like different channels for different things. Like okay. uh, some people, there's like a try. predictions channel where people are like, I predict that Victor is going to kill Julie in you yeah. know, season two, episode <laughs> 10 or something. That's and what we like, all thought, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I love that. Uh, it's, it's great discussions. People are reasonably polite on there and, you know, they don't tend okay. to be, you know, harsh and stuff. And they got some cool ideas on there. I've learned a few things. I recommend it as well. All right. All right. Well, great. Well, that's great, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We did a we did the deepest dive and we hit the bottom, <laughs> the bottom of the ocean with this one. There's, you know, and this is definitely fun to hear. I love talking about from I've uh, been doing a lot of cast interviews. I just did one with uh, AJ Simmons, who plays Randall. Oh, awesome. uh, and so he, he's he got a couple episodes coming up. He's got a big episode eight coming up from from the t- trailer. So okay. um, but yeah, check out my channel. I'm the movie guru on YouTube. You can follow me at the movie underscore guru on uh, Twitter, uh, yeah, and let I mean every week we watch from talk about from, and so now now we're just gonna see you know what theories come to light. I can't so, wait, man. So look, it was great talking to you, uh, and late we'll we'll get back in season at the episode ten. Agreed. All right, guys, take care. Uh, remember to follow both of us and uh, let us know what your theories are in the comments and let, let us know what you guys think of our theories and Terrence theories. Oh yeah. That'd be awesome. All right. All right, guys, take care. <laughs>